it's recording so guys what do you think of the whole thing look at this i love it so much <laughs> hit it i said hit it winner winner it really whips the llama's ass in the previous video, I spoke about like 10 major issues that bother me a lot in Japan. In this video, I am going to speak about things that I absolutely love about Japan. The possibility to buy time. In Japan, you have this option of controlling the time with money. Let's say you would like to travel around Japan. The fastest one would be the bullet train. Let's say, for example, you would like to go to Osaka from Tokyo. You can take the Shinkansen from Tokyo to Osaka and arrive within two and a half hours. Other options, like the first option I have ever tried when I came to Japan, the bus. I took the night bus at 9.30 p.m. and I arrived to Kyoto at 5 a.m. the next day. Bus-wise, it was around 3,000 yen. But for the train, it takes about 14,000 yen. So the possibility of buying time is insane. If you let, Let's say if you also go to an amusement park and you would like to skip the line, you still have the option to pay, which is just great, isn't it? When we are limited in time. So the notion of time being connected to money is the essence of the sentence. Time is money. So I really appreciate this. I know it might seem a little bit scary how much money has control over time. I would say that it's a huge advantage for people who prioritize mm, time over money. What about you? The silence in public spaces is a luxury, I feel, nowadays. I got so used to this quiet, to this silence, that now when I see a group of tourists sitting next to me, I know that they are going to be loud and I just escape the situation. If I were in a train, I would change literally cars. If I'm in a coffee shop, I would definitely move to another place. It happened to me recently. I was in a Denny's studying and working. And I had a group of American tourists sitting next to me. And of course, the culture is very different. And I come from a very noisy environment, of course. I mean, we are Algerians, right? But I couldn't handle the noise after all these years in Japan. Without so much noise in public spaces, you realize that you have less microaggressions. And therefore, you would be less stressed on a daily basis. So yeah, think about it the last coffee shop you visited in your country and how much noise there was around you and how much you have already gotten used to. Did you just get used to this noise, accepted it, or are you part of it? Are you part of the problem? So sometimes you see a sign saying a public performance is prohibited. You don't have this like, you know, artist in the train dancing or doing things that might bother the general atmosphere of the, the place. If, of course, it's sometimes sad because you have a lot of artists. They do amazing street performances. Um, in Japan, it's basically think of the people as a whole. They are very conscious. This helps a lot with the lifestyle, I would say. The same thing with public baths. You go to a public bath, unless you go to a very local public bath with neighbors knowing each other, going together to the public bath. The other public baths usually are very quiet. Like my gym has a public bath, a sento. And when I sit with them, sometimes they just talk to me like, we're all naked, like don't talk to me right now. But for them, it is so normal. It's just crazy, man. The food in general, the food options we have here. It's always less sugar and more healthy food. We have unhealthy food, of course, but you have a lot of healthy options. For example, talking about the vending machines, you have seen them many times. Most of the vending machines offer, I would say, 60% tea so a variety of teas green tea barley tea oolong tea and of course you have soda section and you have other drinks coffee but in general in general you would see kids even kids holding bottles of tea and drinking outside it's the norm people drink healthier drinks but of course people do drink other drinks of course they do have a huge alcohol culture that aside on a daily basis in the morning that would mean that you have a problem you have probably seen on YouTube videos showing beer, alcohol vending machines, or cigarettes vending machines. These machines need an ID. So you need to register, have a card to be able to um, actually purchase. Events all day, every day. Insane, insane how many events we have in Japan. Japan 
has events almost every day so this is the one of the most the biggest thing for me in japan if you are living in europe or something you have specific events in specific seasons but japan has festivals events happening all year long it's a society that has a lot of holidays and from what i understand the, the government kind of like imposes these public holidays so people would be able to take days off with their family and therefore going outside to consume more when i came to japan like i think the second year my students were telling me about this golden friday thing the government was encouraging companies to let the employees leave early on fridays so they would go out to consume so they would be able to consume more so whenever you're planning to come if it's your dream to come to see the sakura uh, the cherry blossom or if it's your dream to come and see the autumn season leaves changing colors and everything it's fine if you come to japan and you don't find cherry blossoms don't be sad because you have gazillion things to do the fashion the fashion you wear depends on which station you are going to isn't it crazy let's say for example you are going to ginza so if you're going to ginza you have to wear something more classy you have to wear like something more elegant you know with some brand ish hidden somewhere if you go to akihabara you wear something more like you know colorful fun if you go to harajuku you wear something fashionable and pop and edgy and stuff like that but most japanese men i would say on weekends they would be wearing white t-shirt and black or blue pants with a stan smith or something of course women have more choices large dresses you know with like some kind of platform shoes and small bag when we are going out me and my husband in the morning we go like where are we going um ginza mm, so what do they wear i should wear this and this oh yeah, yeah okay okay so we kind of exchange ideas on what we wear because of the station we are going to so it's kind of fun to be honest this aspect i love it kombinis are exactly what they are they are convenience stores they are so convenient because you have everything in them and literally you can go anytime you want it's 24 7 i am just lost without them like i don't know what to do because because they are so convenient it's scary you know it's scary how convenient convenience because you get everything you get everything you need so close we have different types we have 7-eleven we have family mart we have lawson we have mainly family mart and 7-eleven lawson are the three big ones in japan so yeah i hope you can come and take a look most people who visit japan and make a video on instagram talk to you about tuna Yummy. onigiri it's number one basically for foreigners because it's the closest to home i guess the gym I need to talk to you about this so we have a system I know for people who go to the gym regularly uh, we have like weightlifting area and you have machines and you don't have access to them if a douche decides to hold on a machine for like an hour or two so in Japan we have a small board where we write our name and each person has the right day on the machine 30 minutes max so you write your name it means you're using it for 30 minutes if somebody wants to use it after you they will write their name under that the culture at the gym is insane people are very polite people are very mindful of the people around them uh, everybody cleans the weights and everything because i've seen videos on instagram about you know like how people use weights and don't put them back how people like are dirty and nasty but then i'm like i cannot relate to that because in japan they don't do that so that was a, that was a huge point for me honestly pretty cool the food in general to be honest cooking in japan is easy ingredients when it comes to japanese cooking are reasonable in price but if you would like to cook anything else that is not japanese the price of fruits and veggies might be a bit higher so cooking japanese food helped me a lot because you can see that okay i am eating my fiber carbs and my proteins they are very clear our cooking in the mediterranean is very delicious it's amazing okay but it's strongly based on carbs as number one source so it's not very helpful but in japan there is this amazing balance and the taste my taste has changed so 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 much our palate has been so compromised by the the taste of sweet and salty that we don't realize what's in between and this is basically what they call umami um i wouldn't say that the first reaction you get from japanese food is like oh my god this is delicious this is not the point the point is like gradually enjoy the food this is why usually you have a plate full of things in them like you have the rice you have the soup and you have other things like fish or meat whatever and pickles and salads so the taste is basically spread around uh, the set 
and it helps you basically travel and you can enjoy every taste in this set you have like a savory uh, type of chicken for example uh, with a miso which is salty and then the rice which is bland etc so i really really grew to love these kind of culinary experience the honme and tatemai i know it might sound creepy to say that japanese people have two faces but in this time and age, I think it's very necessary to have that. Let me explain to you why. So basically, between honne and tatemai, Japanese people have two faces, they say, like the real face and the fake face. What we call tatemai is basically the face they show on a daily basis. They would never tell you what they really feel. They would never tell you what they really think of you, but they will always keep a good face. So they won't make you feel uncomfortable. And I feel like this is very important on a daily basis to be able to coexist with other people. The second phase is honne. Honne basically means the real face of a person. So maybe they hate you or they don't want to deal with you, but they will never tell you that. This is the good thing. They would never come at you in the face and say things unless they're drunk or like just a weird person in general. Being able to separate is very helpful because you have the right not to like everyone. This is okay. There is nothing wrong with not liking everyone, you know? Some people have malaykit on It's okay for somebody to not like you, but it's not okay for somebody to bully you. Like what's happening in Europe or in other countries. If somebody does not like you and sh they show it to you or make you feel uncomfortable, this is not okay. The fact that on a daily basis, they would interact with you no matter what. However, online, it's a whole different story and it could be regarded as the negative thing in Japan. Online, of course, and their hidden uh, identity, Japanese are more honest <laughs> about what's happening in the world. The the attention to detail can be seen as positive thing or negative thing. For me, for my work, it's, it is very positive and I really appreciate the work of every person I met and I worked with in my life in Japan because you know that when you ask them to check an Excel sheet, they will check it properly. They don't really, um, they take every single small job seriously. If you go to the post office, everybody is working hard. If you go to the bank, every small staff is working and doing his job. If you go outside on the streets and you see one person, his main job is, is to just help the uh, pedestrians passing when a car is passing through. He is doing it 100%. And this is something I am not going to lie. We don't have in our country. So it's always impressive to see the dedication of people to their job regardless of their job. So I really respect that in about them. At the same time, sometimes paying too much attention to details, it means following instructions. So they don't really have this ability to thinking outside of the box, which becomes very frustrating after years of living in Japan. You have probably seen videos like these. <laughs> The trustworthiness in Japan is just insane. I have lost my phone so many times. I have lost my bag, camera, this one I'm using here, and I have always found it. This sense of safety that I believe, according to my friends, exists also in some countries like Qatar or Dubai, uh, UAE. I, I haven't lived there, so I'm not, I don't know, but I'm sure it's the same case. Coming from somebody who comes from Algeria, I don't, I am not saying that Algeria is not safe, but I would say that the rest of the world in general is not safe, be it Algeria, the US, Japan is a different kind of thing. It's a different type of trustworthiness that I have never experienced. It changed me as a person, to be honest. Like if I were in Algeria and you find something, you don't know what to do with it. If you find money on the floor, you don't know if you take it to the police station, is the police guy is gonna take it or is he really gonna keep it for someone else? Something happened to me before. I was in Osaka and I on the way to Tokyo and I lost my ticket. I fucking lost my ticket. <laughs> And I was like panicking and I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna ask me to pay for a second ticket, what I'm gonna do? And I went and marched to the station and I spoke to the guy and I was like, I lost my ticket. And he was like, where did you take the train from? From Osaka. I said, oh, okay, uh, that's all right, go ahead. I was like, are you serious? You're letting me go. I felt so, I felt so weird. I'm not going to lie. I felt so frustrated when I saw this video of this guy from Cyprus uh, with his friends who decided to travel around Japan for free by basically cheating the system and hiding in a toilet in the train, uh, living in Japan for years and knowing how Japanese people react. This just was like, what are you doing, bro? Why would you do that? 
yeah so don't be like this dude okay you will see a lot of people filming videos in places that are considered dangerous pretty safe but i still approach with caution i mean i'm not an idiot but i still have a sense of safety that does not exist i believe in other countries alcohol the relationship with japanese people with alcohol is very interesting i've been to other countries where open can law exists which means basically people cannot drink alcohol outside um but in Asia Asian countries like Korea or Japan people are allowed to drink outside although I believe that they changed it this year and they have created some kind of law that does not allow people to drink alcohol on the streets it's mostly because of foreigners who start fighting outside this is what I read so don't attack me this is stuff I read online I don't drink so you know I don't have a, a single idea from what I have seen let me tell you this tiny story when i first visited japan in 2015 i arrived from haneda and my hotel was in akihabara i arrived to the akihabara station but i didn't have internet i didn't have a smartphone back then yeah i didn't have a smartphone back then i just had a kindle with me an old kindle with downloaded maps of the area to know where my hotel is i arrived to akihabara and i was like oh my god i didn't know they have so many exits so i asked a random guy and he was like follow me and I'm like, all right. So I followed the dude with caution, of course. He took me to the hotel. This is the hotel. He left. And I realized halfway that he was drunk because of the way he was walking. This guy was drunk, but he still took me to the hotel and left. Do you understand what I'm talking about? This is crazy. Now when I see drunk people on the streets, I don't mind them because I know how much pressure they go through all day, especially at work. I'm not scared of passing by a drunk person especially if they are japanese having characters for everything in japan like even a bank has a character one of my banks has this character as a mascot characters are everywhere in japan it's insane and they basically make everything cuter even if it's horrible expect to see serious companies having a silly mascot for their company so like yeah you have this culture that's pretty weird to be honest for me but it's kind of funny i think the whole marketing behind it is to make the company more approachable and it's not always the case to be honest i think you have seen probably these toilets in japan these are the toto toilets let's talk about toilets in japan <laughs> toilets in japan are a miracle they are beautiful they are clean all the time this is insane you go to a park in the middle of nowhere and the toilet is pristine so i really have high respect for japanese people to respect the the cleanliness of toilets and to mind the person using them after the convenience of things like i have i used to have an app to see where i can change my daughter's diaper something that killed me in algeria when i go back home very it was very hard for me to go outside with my daughter because i know i'm going to suffer and struggle uh to find places to change her so all I can say is I have all respect to uh, moms in Algeria. I think that's it. That's the only, these are the things I wanted to share with you when it comes to things I love about Japan. I, it's very difficult for me to leave Japan because of this, because of the convenience, the quiet. I had a very hectic childhood and I always had this, my house was in front of a, a gas station and noise was omnipresent. And I feel like I have developed some kind of trauma from it and I became very, now I, I had a lot of anger issues when it comes to noise in general. And I feel like Japan was the best choice for me as for my personality. It fits me so well that I don't feel like a stranger in this country. Of course, I do feel like a foreigner, but when it comes to daily life things, I feel very comfortable because it suits my personality. I wouldn't say that it would suit everybody because I met other Algerians who complain a lot about Japan because it doesn't suit their personality. So I would say it really depends on the person rather than the country. How about you? I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's very short, but I really want to keep my videos short for you. If you have any questions, you know what to do. You have to subscribe and you have to like. Follow me on Instagram as well. And lots of love for you. Bye. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap.